Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwamesh Allah, Koholoyim Lai, Hawabashi Mewashai, Bahashim Rakahakadash. There were honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who grew well that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Akiyam and Akwaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahawabashi Mewashai to the best of their ability. Jachanan Nawaf just coming at you with another quick, quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And the true name of the Father, or the greeting that I said was, um, you know, Kohalayimla, which is all praises to the Most High, which the world ignorantly calls, you know, um, God, Allah, Jehovah, and all these different names. But his name is Yahweh, which means that he exists, or, or he is to be the existing one. And um, the Paleo Hebrew, Bahashem, and the name of Yahweh Shai, his son, our King, our Savior, his name is Yahweh Shai, not Jesus. The world ignorantly calls him Jesus and Yeshua and all these different names. But his name is Yahweh Shai, which means that he's the Savior or Deliverer in Paleo-Hebrew. And um, the Rakach Hadash, that's the Holy Spirit. And we like to bring out those true names because those true names are important to know. And especially in these last days because we're about to go through some things where, you know, hey, all we're going to have is the names. And, and, and what you've learned from these scriptures, you know, that's why it's so important to, um, you know, fill up on these scriptures, man. You know, you got to get into these scriptures and have something to fall back on. You know what I'm saying, too, um, because things are going to get so rough that, it, you know, a part of what, you know, I want to go through in this lesson as well is is that, um, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of things that's going to happen that are that is going to make you want to murmur and that's going to make you want to complain. And you don't want to murmur or complain against you. How about you? Mean, shy. You want to be thankful in all things. Um, I mean, like I said, again, you know, <laughs> hey, when you go into the, the, the story of what I'm about to go into, you know, um, first Corinthians chapter 10 is kind of going back and it's giving you recollection of what was happening with Israel um, in the wilderness. And a lot of those people didn't make it, man. It was a whole generation that didn't make it. Actually, I think only 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 two people in the, in the, um, the ones that was under 20 years old that made it, um, you know, out of the wilderness and into the promised land um, to go along with them. Um, I think it was Joshua, Joshua and Caleb, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But um, this is entitled Avoid Israel's Mistakes, 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. And I'm going to start from the top. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now, who is, our fa um, who is the fathers that's being talked about? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So this is letting you know that the scriptures, the first covenant, new, um, the new covenant, all a hey, this this truth is for the Israelites. It's not for heathen nations, man. The Christian church has lied to the people and have told the world that the Lord is some white guy. He loves everybody and he's coming back to save everyone. But this is going um, clearly into the Israelites, man. If you read these these um, so you, it, when when you come into this truth and you actually read these verses, these chapters, or each book, it makes so much sense that this is all about the Israelites, man. But it takes you, how about Shemiah was shy to open your mind up to that. And a lot of people are just not going to get it, you know? A lot of them are just not going to get it, man. Okay, but it says, um, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all... And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So we already know who this was. This is talking about the Israelites when they came out of Egypt with Moses and all that good stuff. Right. And did eat the same spiritual meat. Right. Now, let's go into that spiritual meat. And, and what it made me think of was let's go to the the actual um, location of what's being said here. This is Exodus 16 and 15. And it just made me think that, you know. With the scripture where it talks about my servant shall eat, my servant shall drink, my, my servant shall have joy. I'm at to uh, find that as well. Um, so lucky I should have had that precept on deck already. Exodus 16 and 15, it says, And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. So we're going to have food to eat, man. You know, we're praying that, you know, we're, we're able to make it through all the things or to come to pass, you know, according to Luke 26 and um, 30, 21 and 36, Salakia. And I like to always pray that prayer, you know, pray that um, Yahweh will help you to be accounted worthy enough to make it through all the things that are to come to pass and accounted worthy enough to stand before the Son of Man and to endure what's, 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 what's to come. And no matter where we are, you know, the Lord, the Lord, it, all things are possible with the Lord. 
It's not going to take um, you having a damn restaurant on the corner to go get something to eat or, you know, a hey, the Lord can pr provide you with um, food any kind of way that he wants to, man. You see what I'm saying? He can provide you food from from any angle, you know, because he provided manna from heaven. You know what I'm saying? For for the children of Israel. That, that's that's powerful. That's what I was reading into. In verse 35, is pretty much the same thing. And the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years until they came into the land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan, right? And you can also get that, that account. They have an account in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 15 and verse 20. Let's get into that. Uh, yep, Nehemiah 9 and 15. And gave us them. Let me see. Let me start from 14. And made us known unto them the Holy Sabbath and commanded them precepts, statutes and laws by the hand of Moses, thy servant, because the law, statutes and commandments were only given to the children of Israel. And this is what's being explained by Nehemiah. He's going through a little bit of history here, too. Um, the people confess their sins is the title on that. But it says and gave it them bread from heaven for their hunger and brought us forth water. For them out of the rock for their thirst and promised it promised them that they should go into the, the prompt that they should go in to possess the land which thou had sworn to give them. So as you can see, the Lord, hey, he gave them water. He gave them bread. And he was really, you know, in, in, in a lot of ways, tested our people, too, as well. You know what I'm saying? To see what they're going to obey, you know, and. and and Negroes got to complaining and murmuring. That's another thing that I wanted to talk about and get into. You know what I'm saying? Because, say, for instance, you know, everything goes down and you're on the run. You're not one of those ones that got picked up by the authorities. You're not in no camp. You're not, um, you know, being, you know, you're just on the run, basically. You got your family members with you. You got, you know, some of your, your people with you. And they're with you and they get to murmuring and complaining. You know? You're going to have to basically tell your grandpa or uncle, whoever they may be. They may be older than you. You may be a kid in this thing because <laughs> a lot of prophets are the prophets that's back on the earth. Are young, man. You know what I'm saying? And you may have to tell your, your people to shut the fuck up, man. Like, hey, look, stop with the complaining and sternly tell them that, you know, <laughs> like straight up. You know, we don't know the situation. I'm just saying that as an example, because um, there there could be some situations where we're on the run with family members. You could be with your woman or, or you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you could be with the children. Everybody complaining. Well, we should have stayed where we was. We had well, at least we had some still some food in the refrigerator and in the cabinets. What we running for, you know, or at least we could have went, you know, these these people, our people was really fussing about. They actually got together and wanted to get a captain to take them back into Egypt. After the Lord, after the Lord had went, you know, done all that he done to bring them out of there. They wanted to go back because why niggas is hungry, thirsty and not just being. See, we have to be patient, man. That's this is where patience is going to come in at and all that, man. You know what I'm saying? OK, so now let's go back. to First Corinthians, chapter 10, let's get uh, first verse four. And did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was your how was shy. You see, so we had food, we had water. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Jake just didn't have what he was accustomed to having. You see. But what what happened once once the, the, um, the children of Israel went into the promised land, they had. All those things and some. See, you have to go through some things, man, and it's truth to get the reward. It's not going to be an easy walk. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, it's things that we all need to work on as far as like, you know, um, complaining, murmuring and working on stuff like that myself. You know, you know, you had to cast down those imaginations, work on, you know, um, 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 you know, being temperate, you know, your spirit. You know, you, you want to be walking in the spirit, man, best you can. And not in the flesh. You know what I'm saying? So um let's get the precepts on this particular verse. Uh, let's go back to Exodus chapter 17 and verse 6. And it reads, Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the, the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out, water out of it, that the people may drink. 
And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of elders of Israel. So, hey, that that, that was a that day that we and that was a lot of people. You have to realize it was a lot of people, man, that came out of Egypt, man, along with the cattle, you know. Because Jake had some cattle with him. This is Numbers chapter 20 and verse 11. I'm just saying, hey, when, when things all go down, man, we're not to worry about anything, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is going to take care of everything that we need. He's been he's been handling that since since the day of your birth, man. Since you've been conceived. It, it, you you could have been, um, you know, miscarriage by your mom, man. The Lord brought you through pregnancy all the way up to whatever age you are right now down to the millisecond. So why are we worried about anything? You have to, you know, keep things like that in mind, man. Numbers chapter 20 and verse 11. And Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod, he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also. So as you can see, like I said, hey, the Lord, he took, he's taking care of our people, man. He's going to take care of us when, when all things come to naught, man, because it's going to get real nasty out here. And, 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 and you're not going to get a damn cheeseburger when you want a cheeseburger, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not going to be able to pull up to uh, uh, Shake Shack, McDonald's or Sonic or whatever you may have. You, It's not going to be you may not be able to you're not going to be be able to pull up to your auntie house, you know, and get a plate, man. You know, you never know what you're going to be eating, man. The Lord might lead and guide you towards a damn canned good. And that canned good might be what you're going to eat for the next two days, three days. <laughs> Run you across a nice water source. We just never know. You know what I'm saying? But the thing of it is, we want to take it patiently and we, we don't want to complain, man. So this is Psalm 78, verse 15. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. See, there's plenty of scriptures on that. Verse, let's go back though. Let's go back. Because I'm just, I'm not going to read all this, um, this chapter or whatever, but... It's a good chapter to go through because it definitely gives you things to not murmur and complain about. This is verse five. But with many of them, Yahweh was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. See, the Lord was not well, you know, hey, the Lord had it out for a lot of our people. Let's go back and let's get the account. Let's go to Numbers chapter uh, 14 and 29. So like you're a little under the weather, man. But I'm, I'm working through it, though. And, you know, working through it. Yahweh keeping me on point. It says your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me. See, you don't want to be that murmurer, man. Matter, matter of fact. Um, let's get this word murmur. I never looked it up before. Let's get it for edification sake um let's see how it's worded yeah they have it a little phrase h3885 is loon lawn i think it says to lodge stop over past the night abide to lodge past the night to abide remain to cause to rest or lodge to dwell abide to grumble this is what we need right here to grumble complain murmur See, to grumble. Let's see. Uh, to be obstinate, especially in words to complain. Matter of fact, let's get this word obstinate. Let's see what it says in the um, the regular dictionary. Always good to look up words. The apostles always say look up words, man. Obstinate, stubbornly, see, refusing to change one's opinion or choose or chosen course of action. Despite attempts to persuade one to do so. See, so we don't want to be complaining against the Lord, man. We we have to take, you know, everything. Hey, do what we're supposed to be doing and and and, and just hey, keeping it moving, man. Because they have this saying, um, um. <laughs> Uh, there's no use of complaining because nobody's listening anyway. <laughs> you know, you'll have people, they'll, they'll be listening, but they're not, it's nothing they're going to do about it. So, so basically it's going in one ear and right out the other, man. Okay. So let's get, let's get another precept. Well, oh, matter of fact, we're still here. Uh, let's get verse 32. Well, I could have just kept reading verse 30. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein. Save Caleb. Yep. The son of Japhana, 
and Joshua, the son of Nun. So out of all those people, man, those were the only two people that came off in there, you know, other than the, the people that, you know, the children or the ones that were under 20. Um, it says, but your little ones, which he said sh should be a prey because they was like, you know, you brought us out here for our wives and our, our children to be a prey to basically die. It says, but your little ones, which he said should be a prey. Then will I bring in and they shall know the land which ye have despised. So the children went in, you know, but as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. So, man, they was there until all that generation died, man. <laughs> After the number of the days in which he searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, who shall ye be, shall ye bear your iniquity? Even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. Man, that's crazy, boy. Woo so every single day, the Lord added a year of punishment onto. <laughs> My goodness. Verse 35. And Yahweh have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that all gathered together against me in this wilderness. They shall be consumed and there they shall die. Cold, man. We don't want old parts of that, man. Let's go to um, Numbers chapter 36 real quick here. 26, Lockyer. 26. Verses 64. 65 but among these there was not a man of of them whom moses and aaron the priest numbered when they numbered the children of israel in the wilderness of sinai for the lord had said unto them said of them they shall surely die in the wilderness and there was not left a man of them save caleb the son of Japhanah, and joshua the son of nun so hey there you have it man all of them died right there in the in the in the um the wilderness same account in the book of psalms a lot of these books and um a couple of these chap uh, chapters in the book of psalms it gives you the history of what was going on back there too and it'll give you a little bit more insight you know the scripture says um with thy through thy precepts i get understanding that's why it's so important to go through precepts because you might get a little bit more than you got from the last precept that'll put all the puzzle together okay so this is psalms 106 and 26 and it reads therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations and to scatter them in the lands. So, hey, man, it is what it is, man. So it goes on down here, too. Let's go back. Because you can read, like I said, again, you can read through this. I don't want to keep it long. I just wanted to go through a few things. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let me let me search for this one scripture. What is that? Uh. Oh, man, what is that scripture? Because this was the scripture that, that came to mind when I first was reading that. Uh, yeah, it was uh, Isaiah. That's what it was. It's like, yeah. I knew it was in Isaiah, just then got about where it was. It's been a while. Isaiah 65. Come on here, blue letter. What you doing? You're loading up pretty slow here today. Isaiah 65 and 13. It says, Therefore thus saith Yahweh, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And, and hey, you want to be one of the servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. You want to be a part of the army, man, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the, the, the heavenly host, man. The man of war. Because um, the, the scripture goes off into um, not muzzling the ox. Um, it goes off into, um, you know, an army, basically, um, who will basically go into an army and basically not be provided for. You know, when you go to the army, you know, so to speak, you're going to be provided for. You're going to be provided with, you know, your food, your your um, water, you know, um, your tools, your equipment, your housing, you know. So you're going to you benefit from. 
who you're serving, so to speak. You know, it goes off into talking about the um, the priests or the Levitical priests. You know, when they was in the temple, they lived off the work that they done in the temple because Paul was speaking about that, too. Or, um, in, 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 in um, Corinthians or whatever, you know, as far as like him doing the work and he had an, uh, uh, a, a right to actually, you know, get carnal help. So to speak from, um, you know, who he was teaching and preaching to or whatever, you know, roughly paraphrasing. So it's going to be the same thing with if you're into this truth and you're out here teaching, you're actually hitting the highways and byways. You're doing lessons on a day to day basis. You're feeding the flock. You're constantly doing the work. The Lord is going to look out for you, man. That's this is what this is saying. But if you're not a servant, guess what? It, it, it's clearly telling you what's going to happen. And the NLT over here says, therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My servants will eat, but ye will starve. So if you're not a servant of the Lord, you're going to be starving. My servants will drink, but ye will be thirsty. So if you're not a servant of the Lord, you're going to be thirsty, man. My servants shall, uh, my servants will rejoice, but ye shall be, but ye will be sad and ashamed. My servants will sing for joy, but ye will cry in sorrow and despair. And that's something that we don't want, man. You know, and I'm not going to keep the lesson long. I'm, I'm going to end out there. Um, you know, let's, let's work on the murmuring and complaining, you know, cause shit do get on your nerves. You know, you get a little bit vexing, you know, because the scripture talks about, um, Oppression making a wise man mad When you see the shit that's going on You kind of get I've been trying to, I've been really catching myself Because man I'm talking about man This thing You want to have that type of patience man Because the, the the thoughts man Especially when we're going through What we're be You know when we're teaching man We go through a lot To go through the information That we actually read and see on TV But when we're scouring through this news man See you know you have a lot of people They just kind of have the luxury of sitting back And just accepting the lesson You know but they you know they're not actually scrolling through stories and looking at the news. And you just like, man, God damn this place, man. But we got to do it. And then we have to keep in mind that, you know, keep our, you know, keep focused that, you know, this thing is something that we have to do. And we should be thankful to you. How about you? Shah that we're in this truth, man. We can't be complaining or murmuring about it like, man, hey, fuck it. I'm just going to go back into the world. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just like, what's the use? No, you don't want to be like that, man. So we're, we're going to constantly continue to grow in this thing you know according to the will of Yahweh by Shimei Oshai so you know I didn't want to keep the lesson long again I pray that the lesson was edifying and if you into this truth continue on doing what you have to do we got um you know the, the Shabbat coming up this weekend matter of fact it'll be a 48 hour I call it the 48 hour Shabbat because um we had to finish out this month from um Saturday sundown to Sunday sundown then the new month the new moon comes in Sunday sundown to Monday sundown. So they're going to all ride in together. You know, so sometimes it's that way. Sometimes you have a day skip. You know, sometimes they land like that. You know, we, we get quite a few of those throughout the year. I would have to have to say we probably get about four of those, I think, a year or so. You know what I'm saying? Where it lands like that. Um, so, hey, you just say hey, just go and do the shopping that you have to do. You got today. You got tomorrow, you know, to, you know, until it's sundown. But get prepared, man. To, Go ahead and have what you need in the, in the house, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, for what you need to do to Shabbat for it. And we got the uh, Passover coming up. Not too much more longer, about another month or so. Two months. No, no, I don't think it's two months. I think it's, yeah, you know, give or take a month and a half or so. You know, we'll see. But, um, yeah, man, we're at the end of this thing. All we got to do, let's just stay focused. Continue on doing the work that Yahweh about Shemiah Shah is giving us to do. And continue praying, man. The, the scripture says pray without ceasing, man. Pray without ceasing. Continually pray. And pray for the brothers, man. Pray for the brothers that's going out on the highways and byways. Because hey, hey, the brothers are putting their, their bodies on the line, man. This is, you know, their you know, their bodies is a sacrifice out here. Cause you have damn deem these damn demons, these people crazy, man. You don't know who's gonna run up on you, you don't know what's gonna happen. But we we do, you know. Trusting you, how about Shimmy outside? But hey, pray for the brothers that they can speak with boldness it's to speak this word, this truth with boldness, man, and not be afraid. Even in the, in the, you know, even you know, like that spirit of Stephen, basically when he was being stoned, hey, he was, hey, he was going hard. He was giving, <laughs> giving them that business, man. He was giving them them scriptures, and it was cutting them to the bone. He didn't shut up or stop. Like, oh, you know what? Let me stop. You know what I'm saying? They gonna, you know, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna do this to me. You know. You know, you, there is a time for everything, though. You know what I'm saying? We have to use wisdom as well. You know, we're not going, going to the job and screaming on the Edomites. You goddamn Edomites, you're going into slavery. You're... Nah, man, you know, there's a time in, uh, you know, 
day for everything. But with that, hey, I pray that this lesson was edifying. Kwame Ashala.